Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice algebra problem, which is x squared minus y squared, this is equal to 5. Let's call this equation 1. And x times y, this is equal to 6, let's call this equation 2. Such that x is not equal to 0 and that y is not equal to 0. So what is the value of x and what is the value of y? So let's prevent the solution from here. Now, the first step here, from equation 2, which is x times y equal to 6, let's make, let's make x to be the subject of the formula here, by dividing by y on both sides, so that now, x is equal to 6 over y. So let's call this equation 3. So, now, this equation 3 here, let's plug equation 3 into equation 1. Equation 1 is x squared minus y squared. This is equal to 5. So let's substitute x with 6 over y, so that we have 6 over y raised to the power of 2. Then subtract y squared. This is equal to 5 from here. So we have that 6 over y raised to the power 2. This is in the form of a over b raised to the power of n, which we can express as a to the power of n over b to the power of n. Applying this exponent property, then here we have 6 squared over y squared. This is, this is minus y squared. This is equal to 5. Now, y squared is our number, so this is over 1. 5 is our own number, so this is over 1. The LCM is y squared, so let's multiply both sides by y squared times here y squared. So y squared here and y squared simplifies, so that 6 squared, this is 36, minus here we have y squared times y squared, so this is y squared raised to the power of here we have y squared times y squared, so this to the power of 2. This is equal to 5y squared. The next step from here, let's take 5y squared on the left add side, so that now here we have minus y squared raised to the power of 2, then subtract 5y squared, then plus that the 6, this is equal to 0. So let's divide both sides by negative 1, so that minus y squared is to the power of 2 divided by minus 1. So this is y squared is to the power of 2 from here, then minus 5y squared divided by minus 1. So this becomes plus 5y squared, then plus 36 divided by minus 1. So this becomes minus 36. This is equal to 0. The next step from here, we have y squared and y squared here, so we can let u be equal to y squared. So let's substitute y squared with u, so that now here we have u squared plus 5u subtract that the 6, this is equal to 0. The next step from here, we have this is a quadratic equation of the form a u squared plus b u plus c, this is equal to zero. Now, from this quadratic equation, we have a equal to one, we have b equal to five, and that c is equal to minus 36. So the next step from here, now the next step from here, let's assess the nature of the root of this quadratic equation. That is, we determine the discriminant value. This is equal to b squared minus 4 is c. So let's substitute the values of a, b, and c from here. So this is equal to 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, then times c, which is minus 36. So here we have 5 squared, this is 25. Minus times minus, this is plus. Then here we have 6 times 4. This is actually 24. So 4 carry 2, then 4 times 3, 12 plus 2, this is 144. 
So we have 25 plus 144, and this is equal to 169, and this is greater than 0. So this implies that here we have two real roots here. We have two real roots here. And therefore, we can proceed to solve for u1, comma, u2 by applying the quadratic formula. That's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is the square root of the discriminant value over 2 times 1. So in this case, we have minus 5 plus or minus, we have the square root of discriminant value here, we have 169 divided by 2. So here we have minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 169, this is equal to 13 over 2. So this implies that here we have that u1 is equal to minus 5 plus 13 divided by 2. And therefore here we have minus 5 plus 13 and this is actually equal to this is 8 over 2 so 8 divided by 2 and this is equal to 4 so we have u1 is equal to 4 now let's solve u2 is equal to this is minus 5 minus 13 divided by 2 so this is minus 18 over 2 and this implies that u2 is equal to minus 9 so this implies that u1 is equal to 4 and that u2 is equal to minus 9. Now, if you recall, if you recall, we have seen that let u be equal to y squared. So let's substitute here the first value of u here. We have y squared. This is equal to 4. So this implies that to solve for y here, we introduce the square root on both sides. So we have square root of y squared. This is equal to plus or minus square root of 4. And this implies that we have that y is equal to plus or minus 2. So here we have two values of y. So the next step here, we have that y squared is equal to, here we have minus 9. So in this case, we have that, to solve for y here, we have that y, we get the square root on both sides. So square root of y squared, this is equal to square root of minus 9. So in this case, we have that y here is equal to, this is now plus or minus. Now, we find that here we have, we can express 9 as negative 9 as 9 times minus 1. So here we have y is equal to plus or minus square root of 9. This is 3i. So here we have 2. These are two complex solutions here. Two complex solutions under y. And these are two real solutions here. So we have the values of y. Here we have the values of y. Now given that we have the values of y here, let's solve the corresponding values of x. So if you recall from equation 3, we have seen that let x be equal to 6 over y. So let's start with the real solutions here. We have that x1 is equal to 6 over y1. y1 here is equal to 2. So we have 2 here. If we simplify here, the first value of x is equal to 3. Now, we have that x2 will be equal to 6 divided by negative 2. And this implies that we have that x2 is equal to minus 3. So, let's proceed here. For the second case here, we have plus or minus 3 high. Now, given that y is equal to plus or minus 3i, remember these are two complex solutions here for y. 
So this implies that x, that is x3, comma x4, this will be equal to 6 over y, and therefore we have x3, comma x4, this is equal to 6 divided by, now this is plus or minus, remember this is plus or minus 3i, and this implies that here we have plus or minus, this is 2 divided by i. So let's verify from here. Let's verify. Let's verify that x1, which is equal to 3, and x2, which is equal to minus 3, satisfies the equation. So if you recall, we end that x squared minus y squared, this is equal to 5. This is under equation 1, and that's x times y. This should give us a value of 6. This is equation 2. Equation 2, given that y1 is equal to 2, and also y2 is equal to minus 2. So let's plug in the values of x and y here. So we have 3 squared minus 2 squared, this is supposed to give us a value of 5. So 3 squared from here, this is the same thing as 9, minus 2 squared, which is 4, this is equal to 5. It's true that 9 minus 4, this is 5, and this is equal to 5. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. If we check with x2 here, this becomes minus 3 raised to the power of 2, minus, this is also, this is minus 2, we have minus 2 squared, this is supposed to give us a value of 5. So minus 3 squared, this is 9, minus minus 2 squared, this is 4. This is also supposed to give us a value of 5, and it's true that here, 9 minus 4, this is 5, and this is equal to 5. This satisfies the equation. We can also check with equation 2 here, that is x times y, this is supposed to give us a value of 5. So we have 3. This is actually supposed to give us a value of 6. Sorry. We have x equal to 3 and y equal to 2. So we have 3 times 2, and this is supposed to give us a value of 6. So 3 times 2, this is equal to 6, and this is equal to 6. So the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And this proves that x1, x2, y1, and y2 satisfies the equation. So can you follow the steps? Like this video and subscribe. Like this video and subscribe. See you in the next video.